that is why I sing all my joys with you I'll share. I plan to take a trip in the good old gospel ship and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm gonna take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm gonna shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world goodbye. Oh, I can scarcely wait, but no, I'll not be late, for I'll spend my time in prayer. And when my ship comes in, and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm gonna take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm gonna shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world goodbye. I'm going far beyond the sky Oh, I'm gonna shout and sing Until the heavens ring While I'm bidding this world goodbye One more time Oh, I'm gonna take a trip In the good old gospel ship I'm going far beyond the sky Yes, we are I'm gonna shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world goodbye. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, sing your song. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think too much off of much about money, but you know we had to have it. Something you got to have. And God will bless you for what you give. And, uh, so, uh, Just to carry on, won't you ask the Lord's blessing? Jesus, right now, Father God, Lord, we need skies. Open understanding, Lord. And all, Lord, that we do, God. Jesus' name. Jesus. That's all I, it's the main thing in my life that I want to know about. I want to know about Jesus. Um, the more I can know about him, the better off I am. Uh, and to know more about Jesus, you have to know more about his word. Because we've often stated this, but he is his word. He is the manifested word of God. Jesus Christ is. Romans, I mean, Revelations, uh, 
think we're going to see if we're in, if we can get into nine. But there are some things I wanted to kind of give you uh, some updates on. If you want to write this down, uh, let me get over here where my phone is. It's got I got stuff saved in it. It's easier for me to save it on the phone than it is for me to have to write it down. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go to um, Isaiah. This is something that you may want to know. Uh, I know I know this is something that Sister Carolyn wants to know. Uh, we talked about this last service. I think it was. Uh, let me get my Bible up. I got two or three Bible apps here, but one of them I got stuff saved in. Let's see if I can find where I'm wanting to go. I don't want to read. I want to go to my bookmarks. All right, we talked about how that uh, in Romans it did talk about the bringing back of Israel, the Jews back under the covenant of, of the Lord the uh, over in Romans it talks about there and then how that it was life from dead life from the dead alright in Isaiah the 14th chapter and I would actually like to go over there see all of Isaiah 14 go to Isaiah 14 all right. But anyway, here we see that um, in the in the first verse, but actually I think what we're wanting to talk about starts on down a little bit further. In verse 12. It says, in verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, this is what happened actually before Genesis 1 2, I believe. Uh, I think it happened somewhere in between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2. Because another place over there, and I didn't look up that one, but I will for next week if I can remember to do that, where it tells that, that it said also in Isaiah that he says that when he creates, he creates it perfect. He creates it to be inhabited. So my understanding of this is God, when God creates something, he creates it perfect right then. I don't believe that God waits down the road or he has to correct something or fix something like it said in Genesis 1-2 and said and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep I don't believe that God created anything like that when God spoke it into existence I believe it was spoken into existence perfect right then now I don't know how many years expired in between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2, but that really has nothing to do with us except the fact that everybody today teaches evolution. That we come from monkeys, and I don't see that at all. Uh, sometimes I might act like a monkey, and when I was younger, I used to act like a little yard ape, uh, and I love climbing trees, but that didn't have nothing to do with me <laughs> being bred from a monkey. Uh, so, when God created, created the heavens and the earth, I believe he created it to be inhabited. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That should have been right there. It was created perfect. So, something had to happen in between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. This all ties in with Revelation. Uh, and Sister Carolyn was asking about this, so I said, well, we'll talk about it a little bit tonight. Uh, I'd get these scriptures together for her, and we would talk about them somewhat to where you could find them in your Bible. 
I don't know how many's ever found them. How many's ever found them in your Bible? Where it talks about this. But Lucifer said in verse 13, he says, For, I, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Now, see, the Bible says that, behold, I might not be able to hear. But he said, Behold, the heavens is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. So, he said, I will ascend into heaven, but, you know, there again, if you're a half inch, quarter inch, or whatever, up off of the face of the earth, you're actually in heaven. Uh, a heaven. There is at least three heavens, because Paul said, I... I knew a man that was called up into the third heaven and he saw things that wasn't lawful for a man to even uh, how'd it go utter, see, utter he wasn't allowed really wasn't for a man to speak of those things these things are to be sought out by the spirit of God and another thing there the Bible also says and says that the Spirit of God searcheth out all things. So if the Spirit of God is in you, you're going to search out to find out what everything is. We're going to find out because that's what's in us to do. We are to search out God. I've used this scripture many times. Jesus speaking, and I love it. I love this scripture because he says, search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life we think we have eternal life but we need to search the scriptures and that way we'll know what we have and if we'll search the scriptures in the right way we will be worship or searching them in the spirit and in the truth We'll be searching them to try to find out exactly what God is trying to tell us in 2022. I mean, this thing has been going on since uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, some, some odd years, 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born. And when he was born upon the face of the earth, the Bible says that Jesus started preaching the kingdom of heaven. He started preaching the kingdom of heaven and he said, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, it was at hand in more ways than one. One way is that the kingdom of heaven was walking amongst them. Jesus is the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, actually, where is heaven? Somebody said, well, where is heaven? Well, to me, heaven would be wherever Jesus is at. And actually, he came to live is his people. He's come to set up his abode in the changing of their minds that we put on the new man which is not no longer thinking about the things of the flesh or the things of the world but we're thinking more or less about the things of what God is trying to teach us. So God is trying to show us stuff and all we have to do is search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of Jesus Christ. That's what he said. That's what he said. So he said I will ascend into heaven and I don't know, uh, I've often used this as an example because uh, back when I was younger and even today uh, we see programs on the television or we can read stories in, in the books and, and usually if they're illustrated you're going to see a king, a story about a king and you're going to see him sitting upon his throne and usually you'll see bodyguards down at his down at the footstool. Now they're not up there, they're not up there where he actually sits, they're down before him. And most of the time they'll have a one on one side and one on the other side, and they'll have a spear. And if anybody walks into the into the court, into the throne room, they will cross their spears to bar the way to the throne. How many's ever noticed that? So, Lucifer
Lucifer and Michael were two of the main angels in heaven. And uh, they guarded, according to the Bible, they guarded, or according to the word, they guarded the throne from the earth. So they stood at earth, that which is heaven is my throne, God said. He said, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. So they stood at the footstool, upon the footstool, guarding the way, which he didn't need no guards. But, because he's all powerful in him. But, this is all symbolic. If you see what I'm saying. It's symbolic. So, they guarded the way to the throne. So, anybody that, or anything that ever did, which there's nothing that could ever get to God. But they barred the way from the footstool. So, then we see where Lucifer said here in verse 13 again, he said, that he said in his heart, he said, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'm going to go above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So he's trying to lift himself up above God. He says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now, let me get back over to the New Testament now. You know, or let's go to Psalms, one place there. Somebody can look it up if they want to. He said, have I have said that you are gods, but you shall die like men. How many ever read that scripture? If somebody wants to find that, that'd be really nice, and you can tell everybody else where it's at, and they can write it down or remember it for later, and they can go back and read it themselves. So, in uh, Jesus talking to the scribes and the Pharisees, talking to them, he says, Have I not said that you are gods? Or what? We have been born of God. Adam was born of God. Even though Adam fell by transgression, he was still born of God. So who was he the child of? Does anybody know who he was the child of? He was the child of God. So what would you call a child of God? You know what they call uh, children of mythical gods? They call them demigods. Somebody brought that to our attention here not long ago, which I already knew that from Hercules because growing up, Hercules was one of my favorite shows. But there never was really a Hercules. But there was a Samson that actually lived and he was a son of of God. There again. So, did anybody find that scripture where it says you are God's in Psalms? You want to read it? Psalms, we need a microphone. Psalms 82 and 6. Let me give you a microphone because we need, we need this to be heard anywhere anybody looks at it because we do have people that watch this program I've been told that we have people that really get love, love the words I love the word that's what it's all about hi right, sister Michelle read that word Psalms 82 and 6 it says I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high what do you want now all of you are children of the most high he said this is God speaking through David. He said, I said, you are gods. You are all children of the most high. So he created us for one reason. Uh, who was it, Sister uh, Mildred King, that, come out, that wrote that song, uh, I Was Born to Serve the Lord? All right, so that's the very reason that we were born. That's the only reason we were ever formed in our mother's belly was to be brought forth to worship and praise and honor the Most High God. Go ahead, Sister 
Okay. But ye shall die like men. But ye shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. And fall like one of the princes. So if the Most High said that we are children of the Most High, all of us, then something has happened somewhere along the way to make us fall from it. And I know what it was. Does anybody know what it was? It was the transgression in the garden. But anyway, Lucifer said, I will ascend up above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. This is God speaking. He said, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They shall, they that, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that did make the earth to tremble and that did shake kingdoms? Do you know that he is the man? He is the angel of God. God created Lucifer. He created him for this purpose. He, he, God's got a plan. I mean, I'm not 100% into God's plan, but I'm striving toward that. I want to know what is complete in his plan. And we can know that. But he said that uh, they shall, that say they shall look as this a man that did shake kingdoms, uh, that made the world as a wilderness, destroyed the cities thereof, and opened not the house of prisoners. Now, we hadn't, we hadn't seen none of this, but he did make it a wilderness. Uh, we can go back into history, and, and they say that they see, they have found don, dinosaur bones, you know, and stuff like that, and I don't doubt it. I mean, I, I've never been to the Smithsonian, or uh, if that's how you say it, and seen the bones all put together of the dinosaur, but I've seen pictures of it. So, uh, then they come an ice age. Everything upon the face of the earth died. So then when the ice melted, what did it become? The waters didn't recede until God came on the scene. Now I'm preaching this because I, this is what I believe. I, I can't completely back it completely, but I can back it so far because I don't believe in evolution. I don't believe that uh, all this started from a big bang out in the ocean a million or so years ago. I believe that God created this heaven and earth. I don't know when he created it, but I know that he created it to be inhabited. And I, see if you can find that one, you can probably find it usually in the, with the phone better you can the Bible, uh, in Isaiah where he said that he created it to be inhabited. Right, he said that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof and opened up that and all the kings of the nation, even all of them, lying glory, everyone in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an ab ad ad the abominable snow man. Okay, abominable branch. And, and I don't believe in the abominable snowman, really. <laughs> but I just I had to say that word to get that word. Uh, the abominable branch, and as the raiment, raiment of those that are slain, thus thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Now, I'm going to stop there for right now, and then we're going to go over to Ezekiel. Uh, now you can go ahead and finish out the chapter there if you want to because it's still talking about it some. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel. I think it's the eight, 28th chapter. And this starts out in verse 2. Now the Lord, when the Lord's talking to to you uh, about different things.
things like he called him the prince of Persia one time. And Daniel said, the prince of Persia withstood me. You know who the prince of Persia is? That's Lucifer. So here he gives him another name. Uh, in Isaiah, I mean Ezekiel 28, 2. says, son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. So now, now he's calling not the prince of Persia, but the prince of Tyrus. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, this is still talking about Lucifer now, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. In the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Now see, God don't have a problem with you being equal with him. Uh-uh. Because we are children of the most high. You are God. So God don't have a problem with you being equal with God. He just don't want you to want to be above God. That's what he said about Jesus. He said that since, you know, Jesus, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus didn't think it was robbery. Being a man. Being fashioned as a man. See, he was a man that had the anointing of Almighty God in his life just like we can have. See, the Bible also goes on to say that, uh, that we're heirs of God. We're heirs of God. And we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You know how we're joint heirs? It's because he is our brother. It behooves him in the book of Hebrews. In the second chapter, it behooves him to be made like unto his brethren that he should be a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Woo, hallelujah. It behooves him. That means he wanted with everything, every ounce of strength in his body. He wanted to be made just like me and you. See, you can't kill God. He had to be made in the form of human flesh. See, the Bible says that the Spirit of God, and we're coming into Christmas time, so this is kind of Christmas message too, but the Bible says that the Spirit of God overshadowed Mary, a woman of the world. <laughs> but anyway, it said that the Spirit of God overshadowed Mary and she conceived and brought forth a son. All right? So, he had to grow up just like me and you did. Well, it come time for him. He reached like 30 years of age because he couldn't start his ministry until he reached 30 years of age because that was the way things happened back then. Today, you can, if, you, if the Spirit of the Lord gets upon you, you can minister at any time. But the thing about it is, is at 30 years old, he went out and he found John, the, uh, John the Baptist, who was baptizing people at the River Jordan. And he walked up to John and, and desired to be baptized. And John said, oh, no. He said, I need to be. John knew who he was. John recognized him. You know, John and him, as far as I know, never met one another, although they were cousins. But they never met one another. Elizabeth, when, when Elizabeth was pregnant with John, Mary seen the angel. And the angel told Mary, Mary that she was going to conceive and bear a son. And so she took off. She wasn't even married yet. But she took off on a trip to go see cousin Elizabeth. And the Bible says that when Elizabeth heard Mary's salutation, that the babe leaped in her womb and he received the Holy Ghost. He was the only one to actually receive the Holy Ghost before the day of Pentecost. I mean, others received... He said, receive you the Holy Ghost, but it didn't come to pass until on the day of Pentecost. Okay. Uh, anyway. I didn't 
you know, it's just Bible moving up and down on me. But anyway, he called him the Prince of Pyrrhus. He's Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and thy said, I am a God. And he wasn't. He was so pretty. He was a beautiful angel. And he was wise. He was so wise, but he was so foolish in his wisdom. He said, I am a God, sit in, and I, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not a God, though thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. He wanted to be God bad, didn't he? In uh, 28 and 3, he said, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. So it wasn't that you could hide from Lucifer. He was wise. With thy wisdom, verse 4, with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom, in verse 5, and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers up. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. See, he was a bright angel. What they call him? Morning star. Uh, is that what they called him over in Isaiah, the 12th chapter, morning star? He was bright. But he wasn't the bright and morning star because that was Jesus Christ. He says, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon me, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. Wilt thou yet say before him that I that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die in the depths, de the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it. And then we're going down to verse twelve. Says, Son of man, take a limit, take up a limitation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sellest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He didn't have a flaw whatsoever. He was, when you looked upon him, all you saw was pure beauty. You know? But then, in verse 13, he says, Thou hast been in Eden. Who was in Eden besides Adam and Eve? The serpent. The devil, Lucifer, he says, hmm. and this thing keeps moving every time it turns sideways, I need to turn that lock off. What, 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 what verse will be on? 13. Thou hast been in the and eaten the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. He was covered. His clothing was every precious stone. Ain't that something? And then it goes on to name the stones. The sardis stone, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. See, the thing about it is, is he didn't realize, he did not realize, Sister Carolyn, that he was a created being. He thought he was just as grand as God was, but he didn't realize that he was a created being. These things were prepared in him. Now, in verse 14, it says that thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain.
mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stone of fire. Thou was perfect in all thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in you, in thee. So what happened was that iniquity was found in you. All right, uh, Sister Michelle, you got that other scripture or something? Got that other one? Isaiah 45 and 18. Isaiah 45, 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. He created the heavens. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He formed the earth and made it, and he, he did it, it not in vain. That's right. He has established <laughs> it. He <laughs> not in vain. He didn't create it to be vain. I mean, look at it. Now, if darkness is upon the face of the deep when he created the heavens and the earth, then it was that something was wrong. He didn't create it in vain. He created. Go ahead. I'm sorry. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. <laughs> he formed it to be inhabited. He created the heavens and the earth to be inhabited. Now I got a question for you, right quick. I want you to really think about it, and then we're gonna go on. Uh, why in the world would God want to create a new heaven and a new earth? I can tell you why. Uh, the reason why is because this heaven and earth is full of iniquity and sin. So it's going to be utterly destroyed. It's going to be burned off. The first time God destroyed the earth by water, this time he's going to destroy it by hell fire. But now, why, if everybody's going to heaven, why in the world would he need to create a new earth? Huh? Because everybody ain't going to be, per se, in heaven. This is something that you've never seen. But we talked about it last, I think it was last Wednesday night over in Revelations, or was it the Wednesday night before? We talked about it over in Revelations 21, 20, 21 and 22. Um, but think about it. I want you to think about it. All right. So uh, he didn't create the earth in vain. The heaven and the earth, or he didn't create the form of the earth in vain. He created it or formed it to be inhabited. So something happened in between the time when he created it in Genesis 1 and 1 and something happened in between that and Genesis 1 and 2. I mean, it could have been 20,000 years. It could have been 10,000 years. I don't know. That's really irrelevant to me except for the fact that I don't believe in evolution. I mean, I believe in, in evolving, yes, but we did not involve, evolve from something out in the midst of the sea where a big bang happened. How many of you ever watched that show, The Big Bang Theory? It was a little comedy show, but, but uh, it represents, what it represents is the Big Bang Theory that, er, that uh, evolutionists are trying to prove. And there's no way they can prove it because God's words already tells you. But anyway, Lucifer was perfect in verse 15. Says, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. See, he's been to the mountain of God. He was a covering, old covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, because thy, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Because you thought 
thought you were so much more than what you were. That's another place when the, when, in the Bible, Brother Junior, where it says, uh, when you think yourself to be something, when you're not, you know, and I don't want to think that I'm something when I'm not. I want to be a child of God, and I want to think myself a child of God, but actually I want to be a child of God. I don't want to just think it. Huh? But anyway, he says that thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries, and all this is coming. Believe it or not, this is coming. This stuff is still coming. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of them that behold thee. All this is going to come to pass. Last verse in Ezekiel, I believe. Or the last one I got down here. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be anymore. See, right now, he still tries to terrorize God's people. But if we'll stand up in the wisdom and knowledge of God, then he is not no longer a terror. The Bible says, over in Peter says, the, that the devil walked to, or how does it go? He goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He goes about as a roaring lion. Think about it is, is that Calvary, all his teeth were pulled. Believe it or not, he can do nothing to you or to me unless we allow him to do that. If we get so fearful of what he's trying to do to us, then he's going to he's going to accomplish what he said to do because we live in fear. Uh, was that the Bible said about fear? Fear had torment. Uh, that's in that's in. First John, ain't it? Uh, somebody read that right quick. Um, it says, uh, I, I know there's other, something else that goes with it. Yeah, he hadn't given us the spirit of fear, but of, that's in another place. There is no fear in love. You know what love is? Anybody know what love is? Love is God. God is love. He that knoweth God knoweth love. He that knoweth not God knoweth not love. For God is, is that what it says right there? Go ahead and read that. Fear hath torment. He that has fear is not made perfect in love. Go ahead. Don't say something else too. We love him because he first loved us. Right. How can he? Who we have not seen. If we can't love God, our brother whom we do see, how in the world can we love God whom we haven't seen? And, uh, yeah, there's another scripture there that says that he that knoweth love knoweth. Read that one. For God is one. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So that's what we got to seek after. We got to seek after that love of God. That love of God, and when we get the love of God that we really need to have, then we don't have nothing to fear. We don't have to fear nothing. Because the Lord, over in Jesus, the Lord Jesus, when he, was, when he was walking upon the face of the earth, he told us, he says, don't worry or don't be afraid or don't fear those that can kill the body. And that's all they can do. 
They can't do nothing but kill the body. After that, they can't do nothing to you. They can mutilate you. They can kick you. They can stomp on you. They can spit in your face and you'll never know a thing that's happening. But, if we don't fear God, it says rather fear Him that can take the body or He can kill the body and He can destroy both body and soul and hell fire. So that's whom we ought to fear. Right there is God. Because He can take authority over us. Everything else in this world is temporal. There's nothing here that has any control over you whatsoever except you give it to the devil or you give it to God. And if you give it to the devil, then you're going to pay the price. But if we give it to God, then we're going to reap the reward. And I want to reap the reward. All right, well, so it's about 7.30. We've been going on almost an hour. So I think that's good enough for tonight. Uh, Sister Michelle, go ahead. Son of the morning, not the morning star. Yeah. He was the son of the morning. That was the difference in between him and the bright and morning star. I knew there was a difference there somewhere. Son of the morning. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. Son of the morning. So he was the son of the bright and morning star. There we go. That's how it goes. I knew it went some way different. All right, so uh, anybody else got anything to say? Kitchen looks good. It does look good. <laughs> yep. Uh. <laughs> She's clapping because she didn't have to do it. Yeah. Uh. Sister Carolyn and Sheila come up here yesterday when it wrote you. And then she come back tonight and done a little bit more. So. Uh, but anyway, we're trying to get it together. We're trying to make it look nicer and do more things and get the gospel pushed on out there. Somebody can kill that thing back there. Not, I mean, just turn it off. And, uh, so, uh, if anybody needs prayer, you can come on up and we can pray for you. I know that we had prayer before service. And that's good. And Brother Bill wants, some, wants prayer, so let's pray for Brother Bill.